starting out, I'm gonna get this one out of the way. This is the conventional thimble that you'll usually see um, most people uh, refer to when they think of a thimble, they usually are thinking about this kind. It's a classic thimble. Um, one thing I don't like about this kind is that you have to get the specific size to fit your finger. So I don't even use these. Um, this one kind of fits around my thumb snugly, but otherwise it's not really beneficial, especially if you have long fingernails. It won't accommodate your long fingernails. It'll kind of just sit at the top. If you don't have the correct size, then you'll have to maneuver to keep it on or otherwise it will fall off. Oh, this one isn't falling off today. Well, I mean, it's not really the most sturdy as you can see. So just to get that out of the way, I will not really be talking about this one um, in this video. This is the extent to which I'll be referring to it. Um, so if you want more information about this, this is a, a classic um, Taylor's thimble that most tailors will use. Um, unless they have another option that they like, which I'll also be showing you in this video as well. But this is a classic thimble. And if you want to learn more about it, then you can definitely check out my blog post on thimbles, um, hand sewing one-on-one -on, -one on my blog at fiberandcloth.com. Um, that's fiber with no E and cloth.com. So the first thimble I want to talk about is the open top thimble, and that is these little guys. Now to start out, no, they are nested. These are a small, medium, and large, um, pretty much a 15 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and 17 millimeter in size. In order to measure your finger to know which one fits best for you, you'll want to measure around the circumference of where you want the out, the upper top ridge to sit, and that is the size that you'll want to choose um, in millimeters. So when choosing one, you'll want one that is snug around your finger but not tight and sitting on the tip. So this, while it works for my finger, is still not comfortable because it's sitting at the tip of my finger and could still fall off. And so the type of open top, the size of open top thimble I'd want would be to fit somewhere around here. This also may be a little too big for my finger. So we can go kind of in the middle. I have another one here, it's the main one I use. And it sits just right for me. Um, you may want to have that stability of it sitting just at the end. It really just depends on you. You may have to um, try out a few different sizes before you find the one that works for you automatically. It may take some trial and error, but this is pretty much um, how an open top thimble works. <laughs> to leather thimbles, which are also some of my favorite types of thimbles as well. If you like a thimble being a part of your finger instead of overtaking your finger, then that this is a good option for you. Um, leather thimbles do come in a specific size, specifically this Boheen brand. This Bo Bohine brand um, is a good brand to use. Um, as you can see, it's a thick leather it's sewn together as well. And then on the inside, it's the rough side of the leather. This is a size small. A size small fits my finger like this, but it also comes in a size medium and large. I do sell these in my shop and they're pretty sturdy. They'll last you a pretty long time. So that's why they have a little bit of a price point, but they're totally worth it because it'll last you a very, very long time. This is a Singer Pro Series leather thimble. Um, it's also decent, but as you can see, the leather quality is very poor and compared to the 
Bohine one. Um, it is a decent thimble though. It's got a good price point. I do not sell these in my shop specifically, but it is a good option if you're looking for something more affordable. Um, it does not come any size in any sizes. It's just one size, but because it's leather, it kind of forms onto your hand like a second skin no matter what size your finger is. It's got some snugness to it to just be able to sit. And then there's this little opening here for your fingernail to stick out if you need it. But this padding here allows for you to also push the needle through with the top of your finger if you want to. Um, I will say again that because this leather is kind of cheap, then pushing the needle through with this top part may not be optimal for you. You may be able to feel it, but if you look under, there's also this plating here, um, not plating, but there's also this uh, layer of leather here that also has little ridges in it. And so you can also use that as well. Um, so pretty much you have two layers of leather here that are good to, to push through um, and also maneuverable. Not as sturdy again, but still a good, decent, a leather thimble if this is the option that you want to go for this is a good beginner leather thimble for you to make um, as opposed to possibly making your own leather thimble which you can also do as well so let's see how this thimble works in action and I can show you a little more about um, the best way to use it thimbles we have are ring thimbles. So ring thimbles are actually some of my favorite thimbles. I am one of those people that does not like to be constricted by jewelry when I wear it. Um, so kind of like uh, open top thimbles kind of make me feel restricted. Like my finger is like stuck in the thimble. And so if you're that type of person who doesn't really like jewelry, then ring thimbles are the best for you. I don't mind wearing rings. Um, they give me a little more freedom with my fingers to be able to feel what I'm touching and also work with the fabric. And so this is a leather ring thimble. As you can see, it's made from leather. Um, I get this from an Etsy store called Secchi Works, and uh, they are a sustainable um, leather bag making company, but they use their off cuts and scraps to make thimbles. And this is one of them. As you can see, it stretches a little bit and then it just goes around my ring finger like this. And so the needle will catch in between the rough edges and sides of this leather here, and I'll have control to push the needle through. The metal ring thimble is the same. It sits on your ring finger and you're able to push as you sew. So when you're pushing through, you can see that on the metal one, there are some grooves here, just like the open top thimble, there's some grooves so that the needle can sit into each one, be controlled and then maneuvered and pushed through the fabric. Um, the last type of thimble I have to show you is a sashiko thimble. Um, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I do apologize and do not want to misrepresent the wording. So um, please do forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I did try to research how to pronounce it correctly. Um, and this is what I was told. So um, sashiko thimbles are used in sashiko work. 
Um, this is how uh, the thimbles look. These are leather thimbles that are custom made um, by a supplier that I buy them from on Etsy. Um, this one, as you can see, is a thick pad of leather that is sewn around the edge. And then this one is just one whole piece of leather um, with a more sturdier uh, circular part here. Um, the ones I sell in my shop are a little um, on the cheap side in terms of quality, but they're still just as good. And if you're not going to be doing sashiko work a lot, then it's the, the perfect option for you. But also it is genuine leather, so it will last a long time. And as you can see, it has these little ridges here so that your sashiko needle can go through um, and easily be held by the thimble. So the way you hold one of these is you slip it it should each one always has an opening like this and then you slip it onto your middle finger and so what happens is as you're sewing because you're usually sewing through thick pieces and layers of fabric when you're doing sashiko work then the needle which is usually very large i'll actually show you I do sell the needles in my shop as well, but this is a this is a set of sashiko needles and this is how they look. And they're very, very huge and they're long. And so the durability of your sashiko thimble is going to matter um, in terms of working long, but because you're usually working in running stitches or um, stitches that won't require a lot of manipulation like you would a regular thimble, um, because you're working in long strides, then you're able to have more endurance with a thimble like this um, to keep going throughout your work. And so as you, as you have it here on your hand, it pushes the needle through the fabric um, as you're going. You can use it to, and then also too, because it's on your middle finger like this, you have freedom of the rest of your fingers to do and work as you will. And that's the, the beauty of it. final subject I wanted to talk to you about is needle pullers. Needle pullers are not thimbles, but they are super, super effective in doing hand sewing work. And so you see I have two. One is larger than the other. I do sell these in my shop, just not this color. Um, but one is larger than the other. The smaller one goes on your pointer finger. These are silicone, so they should just wrap around your finger. I have had these for a long time, and so they're kind of um, loose around the edges, but they still stick pretty snug. And then the larger one goes on your thumb. And of course, you can see that because they're both silicone, that they're super snug on the finger. They'll stay there. Um, there's some uh, resistance there, too, for your finger. It's not just easy to just kind of pull off. So what this is used for is the name needle pullers so there are ridges here as you can see between both of them you have holes for your finger to breathe but then you also have little ridges here that grip the needle and pull it out of an area that maybe had too much bulk and so the needle couldn't handle it or maybe you're working on a pair of um shoes or some leather work and you need to pull the needle out pretty often in order to make your work more efficient. And so you would use these to pull the needle out. The needle will go into the middle of the needle puller and then it would be pulled out from the surface of the fabric or the leather that you're working on. And then you would continue to do the same thing over and over again, depending on the type of work you're doing.